back for part two of this again. Um, just going to get into it and start uh, showing albums. Uh, let's just do it. Let's go with... Alright, number one. <clears throat> this is a Canadian underrated band, as most Canadian bands seem to be underrated. Uh, that's Harem Scarum. I don't remember what number. Oh, wow. Uh, uh, 13. 13th album. Um, they've been around for a long time since the early, early, early 80s. Uh, and they got a little more, they got a little lighter as they got older. So it's more towards the AOR, you know, hard rockish sound. Very good album. I mean, this is a highly glossy album. It's a Frontiers album, so it's glossy as hell. Uh, inner. Lyrics, hard to read as you can see. Sorry about the glare, this is super, super shiny. And that comes on, I think it's red vinyl. Yep, red vinyl, although it looks orange there, it's red. It's very red. It's Rob Hate red vinyl. All right, next is two, uh, same one, but two of them, because they're hard to come by, so I grabbed them both, and that's, uh, Cinderella's Heartbreak Station from Black Friday, uh, RSD. Um, this one's still sealed. I don't know what I'm doing with that one yet. Uh, this one I opened. This is my copy. Again, the same company that did the Tesla for my last video does this. Um, I don't know the name of the label. But it's all like they press in one press and... Um, you know, one pressing, kind of like MoFi does, but they don't charge $125. Uh, but, you know, it shows you the cover, original. You know, anything different about these is, is the vinyl, the color of the vinyl. This is a really pretty vinyl. Uh, like I said, artwork's the same, inner's the same. And it's on this really pretty pale, that looks exactly like it does in person. It's like a pale baby blue. It's like a 50s color, in my opinion. I like the Vertigo label that's on there. The spaceship label. So that's really cool. Glad to have those. Because, man, that stuff this year was... If you couldn't grab it during the, you know, the actual RSD time, whew, they jumped in price. Like, insanely in price. There's that one. Next is a project. Uh, once Striper kind of broke broke up in, in the 90s, um, Oz Fox went on to start his own little band called Sin Dizzy. Uh, he's not dead yet. It's still Christian metal based or Christian. This isn't really metal. It's like hard rock. At the time, modern. I wouldn't say grunge. More in the Candlebox kind of sound. Um... After somebody else in this band that I cannot remember. But it comes on this green color. And it looks pretty much the same as in person. The lighting in here is actually pretty well today. Uh, I think there wasn't much else to this. Nope, that's all I got with it. So there's that. Send Dizzy, he's not dead. Not great, not terrible. It's just Striper Connection, so I have to have it. Uh, Slaughter's first album, Up All Night. Let me take it out of the sleeve. This is a reissue from Friday Music. Up All Night. I think it's Up All Night, right? Stick it to you. The song's Up All Night. I'm telling you, I'm terrible with fucking album uh, titles. I don't know why, but I am. And this is a gatefold edition. Looks like it's signed, but it is. I don't think it is. No, it's not. I haven't even played. I, 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 oh, yeah, I did play it. That's right. I just didn't crack the. Uh, I try not to crack these, so I don't like to open them completely. I think it's on gold vinyl. Yeah, it's like a transparent gold orange. It's really pretty as well. It only came in like red, I think this. Uh, I think that's it. I don't recall. I gotta put this back here now. I'll do that later. 
Alright, next, I already had this on CD and they decided to release it on vinyl later on. Uh, this is Defiance. Um, again, Frontier, so it's super shiny. I don't particularly like the suit. I mean, it's good for the album, and, you know, it stays, you know, it's safe for the, I mean, I know it sounds silly, but it slides in and out easy and stuff like that. That sounded bad. Uh, but this is a band, basically, it's like uh, part of uh, Danger Danger. It has uh, Paul Lane, Canadian singer, that took over for Ted Foley, uh, Bruno R uh, Rival, and Gene Martello. Uh, Gene and Lane were later additions to Danger Danger. Again, uh, Gay Fold with the lyrics and picture. Nothing inside. I think it comes on double black vinyl. This is this is a double LP set. But there are 300 pressed. It's 300 overall, not 300 of black. This 300 period. Um, next is Bonfire's latest one. Um, my God. Fist, Fistful of Fire. Uh, really, really enjoy these. I think there's 900 copies made. Uh, This is the Gate Fall with lyrics, actually readable. I don't think there's much to it besides that, is there? No. Single vinyl. This thing was shipped and somebody must have ran it over. Uh, I don't know if you guys are going to see it, but... I almost sent it back, but I'm like, ah, whatever. You can see the imprint. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it up there. See the imprint of the vinyl? You can feel it, like you can tell some a, a ma massive amount of pressure was on top of this. And the box I got, you could tell it was too. You can see it on the outside of the cover, you can see where it pushed the vinyl. Oh, yeah, it's kind of hard to come up there. Yeah, screw it. And this is on orange vinyl, which is my favorite color. It's just orange. Orange for you other people. Uh, Beyond the Blacks. Now, some of these you've seen in my uh, my best of 2020 <clears throat> because I didn't do updates yet. So this is uh, Beyond the Blacks' latest Horizons. Um, Jennifer Haven's voice is an angel. So some of these I already have set up. Um, symphonic uh, metal, uh, hard rock metal with you know some clean vocals, a little bit of dirty. Uh, Gruff vocals, uh, they've gotten less and less as they've... Uh, once I signed to, where was it? Napalm? Yeah, Napalm. Uh, they kind of got a little softer the last two albums. The first two albums are great. I mean, they're a great album. Don't get me wrong, I made my tops, but... And it's just on black vinyl. Uh, same album. Uh, different colored centerings, but same same artwork. If you like Within Temptation, uh, Delane, you'll like these guys. They're a little bit heavier, a little more progressive metal behind them as well. Uh, we all know this one, so I'm not going to take it out. That's uh, uh, Dream Theater's uh, first album when when, they, when Dream and Day Unite. How many copies? There's 3,500 copies on red vinyl. Uh, so we, we all know this album. That's before James LeBree joined. Still a great album. Uh, I love it. She's going to start sliding. Come on, man. Give me a break. Next is another one I had on CD, and I decided to, months later, put it out in the vinyl. Uh, another one that's up only 300 press entirely. Um, one Desire, uh, Midnight Empire, uh, Made in My Tops. Um, just a solid, solid AOR hair metal album. Uh, the singer, uh, and Andrew... I'm usually pretty good at remember names. It's the titles. Andre Lindman. Uh, he used to be in a band called when he was young, younger. Uh, I can never say Darm Darm Stung or Darm on Stung, whatever. It's like a Swedish or Finnish name, uh, but they sung in English. It was really good stuff. It sounds just like this. I mean, it's similar. Uh, Aor. It's one of those albums you put on and you can just listen to. Every song and not get bored. It's just solid stuff. And again, 
black vinyl, single vinyl on this one. I wish they would just release everything on vinyl. Sometimes I think they do that shit. Um, so you buy the CD first and then get the vinyl. Uh, oh, I can't remember. I think it's a UK band. Uh, these guys are good. These guys, uh, this made my top 22. This came out of nowhere. Um, this is a band called Collateral. They've been around a while, but this is their first, like, real uh, official release. Uh, Self-titled. Um, I'm pretty sure they're, they're English, like UK based. Um, it looks like hair metal. It is essentially hair metal, hard rock, touches of AOR. Um, just Mr. Big Shot, it opens up. I mean, the first side is kick ass all the way through. It's a little bit boring on, on side two, but overall, I give it like an eight and a half out of 10. Uh, it just brings me back to those 80s sound, that vibe, obviously with much better production. Uh, production today is just ridiculous. But uh, here's the inner sleeve. It's, it's lyrics, basically, and then pictures of the band, which is, reminds me of the 80s, 90s look, too. And it's kind of cool because it has a the center, but it's on a, that orange gold transparent color again. A lot of color in here today. But I highly recommend this album. If you like that 80s sound, that uh, kind of mid, late 80s sound, again, much better production, much better sound. But the band's called Collateral. And I think you can find this fairly cheap on, on Amazon now. I've, uh, I paid a little bit more than I wanted to. Uh, I had it shipped from Europe because I, I didn't think we were going to get it here because it's a small band. But it's on it's on uh, Amazon for like 20 bucks. Uh, okay, next is we all know this band. This is a band I did not give a chance in the beginning. I just thought they were being clones of basically priests. Um, this band, I've talked about this on my other video, my uh, best of video. This band, Blind Guardian, uh, Iced Earth, uh, Hammer. There's like four bands. I really, I mean, I got like one or two CDs from each of them, and I just never really got into them. I never, I don't know why, but I went back and start listening to them, just to, you know, like I did with Man of Work because I hated Man of Work based on Rabbitude, but I found, I got it. And now, I buy their shit. Um, but I, this is probably my favorite of the four. Uh, it's Judas Priest sounding but modernized. Um, why I don't like these guys, I don't know, because you can never have too much Judas Priest, in my opinion. But this is their latest called Metal Commando. Uh, there's the inner, so I'm going to pull the way open. Really good stuff, really good album. This made my tops of 2020 and well, and I just got the black final version. Which, the colors are great, but I, I, I just kind of want black vinyl all the time now. A couple of uh, other albums that I bought recently, it, now they're making the vinyl, the shirt press. Like, um, I ordered a, a couple from Transcendency Records pre-orders. Um, and the shirt prints were the black vinyl. Uh, this album I talked about on my tops so of 2022. And that's Heathens, Empire of something, of oh, the Blind. This gets, I see a lot of people love it and a lot of people hate it or don't think it's heathen. I think it's heathen. I think it's a fantastic album, man. Like I, there's a little bit of different element to it, like musically, but I think it's great. I, I like when a band can be a little bit, you know, different in an album. I don't care if it's thrash. They throw some acoustic shit in there. It sounds good to me, man. Um, I, I love this album. I think it's probably my second favorite over there, to be honest with you. Um, it's kind of, it's the kind of album when I put it on, I play it at least twice. It just goes, um, I think it's a, I think I, yeah, it's a gatefold, just a band picture. I think I got something, no, I don't generally get anything when they gatefold it. And it is a double LP. Uh, this is on like a mixed vinyl, I think. Yeah, it's like a smash vinyl. It looks better on this side. I like, I don't mind the red like that, but. It looks actually better on camera than it does in person. It's really cool. <clears throat> it's a double LP too. But... 
I guess I'll show the other one because it is a little bit different because of the way that's just random. Eh, similar. Really cool. And then of course the back side though is going to be darker on these kind of presses because they throw it on top. They need to throw some behind it when they do that. All right. Next, what time? We've got 15 hours. I might be able to get these all done. Next is an 80s band that I've been dying to find an OG of this, but it's 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 in the $100 range. I don't know why. It's not that great, but uh, if memory serves me right, this is another Canadian band. Man, that's a sticky sticker. Um, I'm going to have to put that to the side because that's going to get fucked up. Um, I think there's 500 press to this. Um, the band's called Insane, and the album's called Striptease. If I remember correctly, they're Canadian as well. Look at that hair from that dude. Looks like he's got a freaking hat on, doesn't it? If he doesn't. Looks like Peggy Bundy trying to do some metal. Uh, Insane, Striptease. It's a full album. Uh, I think this they added an extra song on here. But there's only 500 copies pressed, numbered copies. Uh, looks backwards now, but... Oh, shit. Comes with this, uh... They did a really nice job. Comes with the download. I don't know if it's good anymore. Yeah, but this is a repress, obviously. Um, and it comes with this nice little uh, inner sleeve. It's like heavy hair metal, obviously. It's hair metal. Um... But it's really cool. A little right up. Got the band. It's 87. I think it was 87 originally it was released. I'm, I can't read that. I'm blind. Uh, anyway, there's that. I'll show you the vinyl. It's 500, 500 repress, period. Not where it comes in this blood splatter, clear blood, blood, clear blood splatter. That looks like blood splatter. I, I wouldn't know, but. All right. Another RSD piece that, you know, sometimes I do go outside the box, and it's Roy Gallagher's, uh, I think this was a Cleveland Calling. Yeah. It's kind of like an interview as well, because he's talking to the radio host, and he's playing basically live acoustically. It, really nice sounding album record. Um, I really like it. Uh, Rory Gallagher is another guitar player that I knew of, but never was really fond of. And then in the last last couple of years, I've really grown to really like him. And it shows some of his albums. He has a lot of albums, a lot of live albums. I'm pretty sure it's black, 188 gram vinyl. A nice packaging, nice, even the sleeves, nice. Uh, very reasonable priced uh, R RSD piece as well. They tend to get out of hand sometimes. I got a couple from this band. These are the reissues from 2020. Um, my favorite by the original death metal band. Um, death. Uh, Spiritual Healing. These represses. They've done several represses over the last 10 years. Um, I've got a couple of each. Uh, I don't have the OGs, which is what I really want. But these sound great, look great. Uh, of course, you got the usual trash death band collages. And then little story, liner notes, and lyrics inside. I think, that, did they add a track on this one? Uh, I don't recall. I don't think it was. But, uh... Love that band. Love this band. I'm not a big death metal fan. I, I'm very picky with it, but I, I love these guys. I don't like when they do that, you know, uh, really guttural death stuff. It's not the same. And, and I'll never understand cool vinyl, right? Pinwheel, they call it. Pinwheel splatter. I'll never understand why death metal and thrash bands reissue stuff and they put it on like this kind of color or or pink or lime green or all kinds of bright colors uh some some black metal bands do the same thing i don't get it i mean it's supposed to be dark <laughs> uh, 
And there's the you know, sticker. Some of these I haven't even cleaned up yet. Um, then we'll go right to the next one. Death, Scream, Bloody Gore. Again, same thing. Look at this one. One of these had a bonus track. Uh, there we go. Chuck, may you rest in peace, my brother. Another guy I miss. He was starting to do a little more uh, progressive metal stuff with his uh, Control Denied. And again, same thing. Another liner note and lyrics and credits and stuff. So really cool. And this one... All the ones they released in 2020 are pinwheeled. And this is kind of a splatter pinwheel look. It does look cool when it spins around, but again, I don't understand the color choices for metal bands. Uh, like Jason Becker, you know, his reissue with, uh, his was hot pink, but it makes sense because his guitar pickups were hot pink and shit like that, you know? Oh, and the best album last year, period, um, for me at least, is The Return of Hitman. Yeah, the same one that, you know, Metal Sports, and, you know, they did it. They put out album out once every 10 friggin' years. Uh, but this is phenomenal, start to finish. I'd give this 11 out of 10. Um, I pre ordered this, it took four months to get here. And then, I, I, like, I literally play this every fifth album because I love it that much. Uh, very expensive to import, but I missed out on the, uh, there's a silver version out of 100 that I really wanted, but I missed out on it. It couldn't get in time, but I did get the pre-order, and so I got the, oh, did I not bring that over? Uh, there's a 45 that comes with it. It has a bonus track on the other side, just on black vinyl. Pretty simple cut and dry, you know, everything's black and silver, black and gray. I like that. It's cool. Did they not? Yeah, I must have it over there. There's a there's a single that comes with it. It's a flexi. If you pre-ordered, you could get it. I think you can still get it now. But phenomenal album. We're at 22 minutes. Keep going. All right. You could probably be a little shocked on this one. But uh, Orianthi, um, she's a great guitar player. Uh, she's played from Michael Jackson. Uh, plays with a lot of people. Um, Frontiers really, so it's shiny as fuck. Um, great guitar player. A uh, couple poppy songs on here, but there's a couple good stuff. I mean, she can play everything from metal to blues. Um, this is a really enjoyable album. It's one of those albums, again, where you just sit back and listen to it. Uh, black vinyl, so I'm not gonna. I think it's black vinyl. Yeah, just black vinyl. Stop sliding. Um, is it capable? It is. And it's a gatefold. Where Eric's on, what's on the bottom of the band? No, it's just her. But great little album. I mean, you know, for 25, 20 bucks. Uh, I wasn't expecting to like this as much as I did. Kind of just bought it to buy it because I, I like her playing. And I don't mind just guitar work. Next is one of the albums I played the most for in my life. Uh, which I don't generally do, but I really wanted the press of this, so I did it. Um, because I could not find one on and it's got a corner ding on uh RSD, and this thing is solid, man. This is a uh, Slave to the Grind, I think Final Me Please did this, a uh, Run Out Groove, which is a very high quality uh record, pre record uh, label reissuer, I guess you call it. Um, this has Get the Fuck Out. This has bonus tracks on it, too, but it actually has both of the uh, the songs, you know, because Get the Fuck Out was removed off of... Well, it wasn't removed. They just put Beggar's Day on there later on because of censorship. You know, what that's like right now, right? And I'm not going to open this up because it's super sticky. Uh, I'm super tight. But inside. And it does come with... The inner, solid inner. This thing is like, I mean, you could eat out. This thing is, I mean, it's solid cardboard, it's thick stock. Uh, I got the sticker in there somewhere, but I don't know. It's actually in my 
desk over there. Because I, I dropped it and didn't realize it. And although I hate the color, it, it matches up with the the album and it's on red vinyl, double vinyl. Done really well. High quality pressing, sounds phenomenal. Yada yada yada. Another one of those albums that eluded me that I'm happy to have. Um that's just the last of the white line that I needed. Um it's main attraction. Uh they're I'd probably say in my opinion they're second best. I mean I love Fight to Survive, so um but this is heavy. I mean, the, the Lights and Thunder War song is a phenomenal song. And Mike Tramp, Vito Barada, one of the most underrated guitar players ever, or Brada, um, a, a phenomenal album. So I'm glad to finally have that in my collection. And then, you know, it's not an expensive album. It's just a lot of those little albums, that just, you just can never find them locally. And I don't really don't want to pay a ton of shipping to get them. Um, uh, Black one. Just a great copy, too, so that was even a bonus. Uh, I'm not going to open this one, but I'll say because i got like seven copies of this. Uh, Rob Halford's Christmas album, Celestial. Um, I've got, I think, two copies of this. This is still sealed. Uh, and then I have the autographed uh, test pressing of it as well. Uh, I got the autographed gold, gold vinyl copy and the black vinyl, so in this one I picked up. I'll probably give it away. Next year, Christmas. I don't need two black things. I don't, I don't mind having different colors, but I'm not that friggin' bad. Alright, and then next, I'm gonna get this done in time. Uh, we all know this album, but this, I finally got it on the vinyl, and it's an OG. And I think it's a. I think this is a German press one. Yeah, German press. Uh, Keeper of the Seven Keys, Halloween. Uh, but you see their new album cover? For the new album they got coming out, man, it's phenomenal looking. Um, Halloween original, well, it's kind of original. It's a, it's the original lineup, and the inner this is in phenomenal shape for being from what 1987, something like that. Yeah, 87, but it's the German press, and then the vinyl is just mint. It's always fun to. Find those things you need and find them in, like, almost, I, I never really say mint, but in that good condition. Alright, next, oh yeah, another phenomenal album. Okay, you can do it. Uh, Todd LaTorre from Queensryche's new solo album. Um, if you don't get this album this year, you have missed out. This is so freaking much better than I was expecting. He, it's like there's eight different people singing in on this album. His voice, the way he can change his voice and sing, I mean, it sounds like everybody from Udo to 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 Jeff Tate to himself. It's insane how good this album is, and it's heavy as hell. You know, I expected solo albums. I always expect them to be a little bit on the light side. Nope, start to finish, man. You know, a little bit of that Queen Drake sound in there occasionally. But it's basically his own sound, and it's a really cool album cover. Simplistic and cool. Uh, I seen an interview where he talked about the bonus tracks. Originally, each one was for a different country. Like, the one was for Europe, one was for Japan, and one was for the U.S. But he said, screw that. I want to put them all in here, you know? So he put them all in one. That's why you see three bonus tracks. Great, great, great album. The only thing I don't when it comes with a, the OBI... Um, and they were, they were, I think there's five, yeah, there's 500 pressed, and then I got 102, and there's Todd, lyrics, uh, the guitar player, can't remember his name, I don't really know who he is, Craig Blackwell, um, but phenomenal, just heavy, chunky throughout, and it's on white. Vinyl. It's a very clean, clean looking packaging too, but I guarantee that'll be easily top five of 2021 already. All right, I'm gonna try to get through this quicker, guys. I got it. Uh, next is a Brazilian symphonic metal band called uh, Phantom Phantom Elite. Uh, the album's called Titanium. Uh, really good. Again, in that 
within temptation, heavier within temptation, Delane, uh, beyond the black style. Her voice is really good, female fronted, of course, and it's obviously Frontiers by the Shine. Um, black vinyl, I'm not going to show it. There's the inner. I don't think it came with anything else. No. It was pretty cut and dry packaging for that one. I was surprised I put that on vinyl, to be honest with you. And accepts the new one. Uh, too Mean to Die. Alright. I'm probably going to shock a lot of people here because you guys know I love Accept. Um, I find this album, it's good. But I find it a little boring. I find I find myself getting bored towards the end. Um, I've listened to it probably about eight times now because I almost feel bad that I'm like, this is not, this doesn't top uh, uh, Chaos in my opinion. I like the cover. It's just simple and cool. Um, don't get me wrong, I, I really like it. It's just, I, I was expecting more. I just, I just was expecting more, that's all. I mean, it'll make, I guarantee, I'll probably just crack that vinyl. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, let's see, guys. That's what I get for talking bad about it, huh? Oh, it's going to slide again. And I'm grabbing the vinyl and shit's sliding. And... All right. Anyway, that's the vinyl. I got to get this stuff off here. That's the vinyl. And I think there was 2,000 copies of that on that color. I gotta move this because it's sliding off. Oh, I need to check it out. I'll check it afterwards. Um, all right, I'll show one more, and then I got. I have to save the rest for later. Uh, just a little shocking part for you. Um, Eva Cassidy, <laughs> Tim at uh, High Noon's Vinyl sent me this out of the blue. Uh, he remembered me talking about one of my guilty pleasures, and it's hers. This is a four LP set. I mean, it's all 180 gram, and this is. Beautiful sounding. This thing is, it's like you're in the room with her. It's live. Um, but she's so underrated. She passed away in the 90s. Um, beautiful voice, angelic. Just crazy, crazy voice. Um, but I love her. Uh, I love this album. Thank you, Tim. Uh, beautiful. Anyway, guys, this is probably going to cut me off. So I'm going to say goodbye now. And I'll have a part three soon. Um, I I got, I got like eight left in there, so I might do wait a little bit to get more stuff in. But thank you for watching, and we'll talk real soon.